Garden Warfare 2 on PC is in a tragic state right now. We're gonna look at the state of the game in recent years and how it got this bad. So you might have heard about this post going around that hackers are banning people in multiplayer now. Surely this isn't true. Have hackers figured out how to ban people if they're playing online? And you're right, it's not true. You don't even have to be online for them to ban you. They can simply visit your profile. Now you might think, oh, EA has got to be quick to come and fix this, right? This exploit was found a year ago. This exploit was kept mostly private till recently. It's been a thing for a year. I'm sure EA has been contacted about this, right? And they <laughs> did nothing. This is literally the Order 66 of Garden Warfare 2. Wait, hold up. This is affecting all of the PvZ shooter games. So hackers aren't only attacking one great game, but two. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? So the question remains, are they going to fix this issue? And if so, when? No one knows, but something we do know is how hands-on EA is with the issues in this game. And of course, by hands-on, I mean choking the life out of this game. Hoping to squeeze out a few more pennies by releasing it on Steam. Got people excited thinking, oh, this is going to revive the servers. There's going to be so many more people playing. In fact, I thought that as well. That's why I bought it. So, have the servers been revived since it came out on Steam a year ago? Numbers-wise, yes, but... One year ago, server issues. Six months, server issues. Five months, server <laughs> and save data issues. Protest to save Garden Warfare 2. Four months ago, server issues have returned. What is happening to Garden Warfare 2? Redhead makes a lot of news videos on this game, and all of them this year have been issues, issues, issues. And that's not even an over-exaggeration. That is how bad it has been. Why would they sell a broken mess to a lot more people? They just wanted to make a few more quid out here. It's just... And that's not even to mention people are allowed to ruin the game with mods in multiplayer. Oh, what about the ban waves you talked about last video? I've done some more research into that, and all of those posts about the ban wave are from 20. 2021. So from what I found, they haven't banned anyone for hacking for two years. This game, for the first nine months of its release, I would say was actually pretty perfect. So how did EA begin the downfall of this game? You might hear me referencing EA a lot and think that this was developed by PopCap. And you're right, but EA holds all the power with this game. Let's not forget, they allegedly fired the original creator of the PvZ game because he didn't want to make it pay to win. That is how desperate they are to get the green. They make rice gum look like a charity worker. So where did this downfall begin? Frontline Fighters, on the surface, a seemingly great update. A new map based on one of the favourites from the old game. Four new characters, with two of them bringing completely new mechanics to the game. Such as Jinxin and short legendary meters. But EA did what they do best, and used a scummy marketing strategy to get people to cough up. They sold the legendaries, which on their own, while a little bit pay to win isn't terrible since you could still get them for free in frontline fighters packs but it's the way they got you to buy them frontline fighters packs were an absolute con i think this is best shown from german shoe a creator who saved four million for these packs how many characters did he unlock one <laughs> And it wasn't just him getting unlucky. We've spent half a million coins and we have got one character piece. One piece of Captain Squawk. Will we get a piece of the Necros? Will we get the final piece of Captain Squawk? Or will we get nothing? Oh, wow. You've got to be joking me. To wrap up this one million coin pack opening video. Did we get a new character? No. Did we get a legendary? No. Necros and Squawk are only super rares. It shouldn't be that hard to unlock them. And this is the way the scam, or marketing strategy, as I'm sure EA would like to call it, gets people. Because it makes them think, how hard is it going to be to get the legendaries if I can't even get the super rares? Making them just think, you know what, I'll just cough up the 8 quid instead of doing a 37 hour grind. Which is roughly how long it would have taken German Shoe to get that 4 million if he played full rounds of turn and promoted a character after every game. And remember, this was all to get one super rare character. Absolute joke. This was the first time they jeopardized player experience to make some money. It was later announced that other than balance changes, this would be the last update Garden Warfare 2 would ever get. Naturally, with no content updates, the game took a turn for the worse. Welcome back to Garden Warfare 2. My apologies. Let me rephrase that. All right, guys, welcome back to PopCap's Sinking Ship. 
shit. Damn, this game is dying. This video was only posted 10 months after the final update. The community outcries for more content were heard, and EA gave us more stuff we can buy in the shop. You Answering people's request for more content by adding more microtransactions is like your girlfriend saying your relationship needs more electricity, so you fucking taser. Like, sure, technically you're giving more electricity. EA was given new content, but is that really what we was asking for? Now, two years after they announced they wouldn't give any more content updates, they decided they were going to update the game again. The reason for them doing this is they wanted to get people back interested in PvZ shooters before they announced their new game. Which is fine, content is content, but since the motivation of these updates wasn't to make the game better, but just promote their new one. They were gonna cut as many corners as they could. That way the updates would be easier to make and wouldn't take that much manpower away from the development of their new game. There was actually some pretty cool updates that came with this, but everyone had a little bit of disappointment with them. In the weeks before the December 6th update, they released teaser images of these different looking torchwoods and hover goats. When you get different versions of characters that already exist, it's variants. So people were so hyped to be getting Torchwood and Hovergoat variants until... Costumes. Fucking costumes. EA knew what they were doing with this. Making people think, oh, there's new variants. I've got to stick around for this. No, these are just costumes. Something entirely new we've added to the game. So we don't actually have to program in variants. It's lazy. Credit where credit's due, though. These skins did look sick. But, well... Most of them. My god, you're ugly, aren't you? They added a new game mode, Capture the Taco. Basically, Capture the Flag. It was super fun, but two big problems. They made the backyard a playable multiplayer map in Capture the Taco. Really sick, but it was the only map which got fucking repetitive. The other issue is it wasn't permanent. So this game mode that was a huge part of the comeback update had come and gone within the first week of it. It literally felt like we had to wait for this game mode to come back in the town hall before we could play the update again. This lack of finesse was also brought into the next update on 14th of Feb. Another limited time game mode. Saw your survivors. This one was pretty cool. You played in teams of six, you wouldn't regenerate health unless you was getting healed, and you only got one life per round. First to win three rounds would win the game. The only problem with this game mode was it wouldn't kick AFKs. It was a huge oversight which really brought this game mode down. Because sometimes you You'd get in a game and loads of your teammates would just be sitting afk because they had queued up this game mode and fucked off so they could grind coins without even doing anything in this update the devs also wanted to add a new turf map so they thought we'll copy one from the original game and that's fine that's fan service done in a good way they even got the fans to vote for their favorite god warfare one turf map and that is the one that would be brought in such a cool idea walnut hills won the vote we got it in the game but they were so shamelessly lazy with this they didn't program in any of the new classes we could play the new variants for old classes like electro p or park ranger nobody gives a shit about that if you're porting a garden warfare 1 map over to garden warfare 2 and then cutting all of the garden warfare 2 classes out of it what is the point they also added a new variant to the class that already has the most variants twilight trumper can't hate him fast does good damage he had his own exclusive ability which was basically a great big fuck off war a lot of fun to play he was free for a week then the only way you could get him is by buying him shit they also added four more maps to capture the taco <laughs> about time there was a final goodbye event update but i mean it's not really worth talking about there wasn't that much in it september 4th the release a BFM. I don't want to get too much into it because this is about Garden Warfare 2. People didn't like this game. The biggest complaint about this game is that it felt unfinished. It was buggy. The balancing was way off. There was one glitch where your crosshair on screen didn't reflect where your character was actually shooting. It was delayed. So like... The core mechanics were fucked. Unlike all the other PvZ shooters, this one didn't have variants. So we went from a game with over 120 characters to one with 20. Whenever they try and fix the issues with the game, they somehow made it worse. So to try and save this game, EA took the team working on keeping Garden Warfare 2 running away from that game. 
which unfortunately meant on January 30th, we got some changes. Hero Showcase and Community Challenges are shut down. Mystery Portal is only available once a month instead of three times a month. Rux now had the same inventory for two weeks at a time. All of these were done because EA was setting up an AI to run God of Warfare 2. And it was a lot easier for them to program it to do one Mystery Portal game mode a month than three. Or to have to reset Rux every week. Stuff like that. They, they went for the easy route. These were the changes that were clear. But there was also some others noticed by the community. And making a conscious point of putting speed boost on every single mystery portal event that does come up. Should also add that it's been widely expressed that speed boost is the most disliked crazy setting by far. The PC was having a lot of problems with hackers. People were going into multiplayer playing as bosses, all sorts of other stuff. PopCap have now stopped banning people for it. And the server stability on both Garden Warfare 1 and Garden Warfare 2 recently has got visibly worse. All of these sly changes that Wolfie just outlined here, it felt like they were trying to kill off Garden Warfare Warfare 2 so people would go and play BFN instead. Because these changes served no purpose. What does putting speed boost on every single town hall do other than make people not want to play it? What does deactivating like 90% of the anti-cheat do for EA? What, less people are automatically banned for cheating? It made no sense. That kind of brings us to where we are now. Over time, Hackers made better cheats. Some modders tried to make their own versions of anti-cheat like Skid Be Gone, which would blow the hackers to high heaven. But ultimately, hackers figured out how to counter that and even use it to turn themselves into a god mode cactus and the entire lobby into delivery twats. With EA seemingly not caring about the hacker situation, they kept doing more crazy things with these cheats until eventually they figured out how to ban accounts. Love it. These bands have already started making waves in the YouTube community. Deggy, creator of the Wolfie Plays mod, has decided to quit the game and cancel his future mod projects. Foosh has had one of his accounts banned. Splashy Washy has quit Garden Warfare 2 for the time being. And Vile Hyperion is also quitting until there's a fix. The question is, will there be a fix? I feel like a banning exploit is too big for them to ignore. They'll just take their time with it, like they do with fixing the servers. There is some good news. Modders are working on making custom servers for this game, like they did for Titanfall. These servers would actually have anti-cheat. Apparently, they're going to have modded characters, and I've heard even 64-player backyards. It sounds really sick. It honestly sounds like an upgrade. We just got to hold out and wait for these custom servers, because honestly, I think it's going to make this game better than it ever was before. Fucking hell, this video took me ages. <laughs> Alright, bye.